Hello, I am Tracker TD, and welcome to another video on Sonic Generations and Ambient Occlusion. Now, in my last video, I explained the research that I'd been doing into finding what Ambient Occlusion works with Generations and stuff, but in the process of making the video, I didn't actually explain how the hell you're supposed to get Ambient Occlusion working at all in Generations. Uh, I've recently published some new screenshots using ambient seclusion onto various social networks like Tumblr and stuff, and as a result, people have begun asking me, "Quick, how do you do the uh, how do you do this ambient occlusion stuff and all that?" And I was like, "Okay, well, I failed to explain that in my last one, so let's do a new tutorial video on getting ambient occlusion working in Sonic Generations." First of all, you're going to need NVIDIA Inspector. It's a handy program for altering various values in games. You can use it to overclock your graphics card and all that. But what we're really interested in is just for tweaking Generations' settings. Once you've got the tool on all installed and stuff, what you're going to want to do is open it and go to this little spanner icon here. Once you're in there and it opens up, see where it says Profiles at the top. You're going to want to go and scroll down to Sonic Generations, wherever the hell that is in the list, or you can just, you know, type it. Anyway, once that's loaded up, a ton of extra settings become available far beyond what the actual configuration tool on Steam offers. Now, I've already tweaked all of my settings. Uh, as you can see, I've got ambient occlusion compatibility set to Warmonger, as well as a couple of other settings that you don't really need. Uh, pay particular note to Warmonger's setting. That's what you're going to want to set your ambient occlusion compatibility with for your Sonic Generations profile. Scrolling down with the uh, common area, we have more settings for ambient occlusion. Now I have my settings for ambient occlusion set to high quality, and obviously you want to have it set as enabled. But uh, with high quality you can probably tweak it a bit if it lags out your computer. I haven't noticed any performance differences to any like normal lag spikes in generations when using ambient occlusion. But if it does cause your PC to lag a bit more then maybe you can drop the quality down a little bit. Anyway, if all of that's sorted, then you can just go hit apply changes at the top and you're done. And yeah, that's all there is to it. Now you should have ambient occlusion working in Sonic Generations. That said, there are a few pointers. First of all, I've noticed that some mods, such as the graphics overhaul mod, don't seem to play nicely with ambient occlusion. So maybe don't use these in conjunction with that. Secondly, despite the fact I've been showing a lot of footage from the Unleashed project and a lot of screenshots, Ambient Occlusion and the Unleashed projects don't exactly go hand in hand for some reason. It still looks good, but there are a few lighting glitches here and there, especially in areas such as Holoska, so just keep that in mind as well. Another note that could be perhaps a deal breaker for some, though it really shouldn't be, uh, is the fact that the FX Pipeline shaders, the Sonic Unleashed style ones that come with Sonic GMI, don't work with ambient occlusion at all for some reason. I have no idea behind all the specifics of it and why exactly it doesn't work, but honestly I think ambient occlusion looks much better than the Pipeline shaders anyway, so you don't really need to worry about this. Anyway, that's all from me today, folks. Thank you for watching and have fun playing Sonic Generations with ambient occlusion.